Oh, Rick, our question is, do the Palestinians or Israel belong in Gaza? And our theme text is found in Exodus 32, verse 13. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And Jonathan, I am sitting here in Edison, New Jersey with uh, Ken Rawson, uh, and in the first hour we did a, uh, he gave us a real good sound history lesson on who the Israelis or who the Jews are, who the Palestinians are, and uh, where Gaza actually belongs in terms of biblical prophecy uh, and actually historical record. And uh, so it's a very fascinating uh, history lesson we've had so far. And folks, if you have a thought on all of this, uh, you're welcome to give us a call at 442 442- 6102. That's 442-6102. And Ken, at the, at the end of the first hour, we had just mentioned, just by way of recapping, that uh, Gaza uh, was part of what was given to Israel uh, in, the, in the 1940s, was lost in their defensive war in 1948 when they became a, a, a state, and uh, was regained when they were attacked in 1967. So if it was part of what God gave them originally. It was part of what was given to them back in the 40s. Why are they giving it up now? That's the, the, the thing. This inquiring mind wants to know the answer to that one. That's a good question. And uh, I'd like to give a scripture that shows that really the Lord isn't very happy with uh, giving up of land because it's going in the wrong direction. In uh, Micah, the seventh chapter, uh, verse 11 and uh, this is a modern translation, and it's uh, contained, uh, this tra- uh, translation uh, or way of translation uh, is contained in all the uh, translations we saw other than the King James. So it's the uh, unanimous uh, translation of the translators. Micah 7:11. a day will come for rebuilding your walls. On that day, your boundaries will be extended. God is saying that the time is coming, the end times, at the end of the uh, Christian age. In that day, it would be a time for Israel's boundaries to be extended. And what do we see happening? Israel's boundaries are being contracted. Something's wrong with that picture. (laughs) Something's wrong and God isn't pleased. Okay. Uh, Why is it being contracted? The... Arab so-called Palestinians have two things going for them. One, worldwide propaganda that we mentioned earlier. And what makes this propaganda effective is that the Arab-producing oil states, oil-producing states, control, have a large degree of control through OPEC, of the price of oil. Western European nations like France are 100% dependent on Arab oil. The United States is 65% dependent on Arab oil. The Arabs have the Western powers and the major nations over an oil barrel. (laughs) And they're beating them. And they're saying, look, you see world uh, politics the way we see it, but you're not going to get oil. They turned off the oil speaker, remember, in 1973? Right. And you had oil uh, or gas lines at gas stations a mile, two miles long. I remember that. <clears throat> and the second thing that the Arabs, so-called Palestinians, have going for them is terrorism. Why did Israel give up uh, Gaza? One reason is the cost of the IDF, Israel's military forces, in defending the Jews in Gaza against the Arab terrorism was millions and millions and millions of dollars annually, and it brought Israel from a thriving state way down to the point where 
one third of their children are in poverty. All right now, how many how many Israelis were living in Gaza at, at this point in time? <laughs> at this point, and that that's another point I'm going to make is the reason that uh, Gaza is being okay. given up. Uh, Ten thousand Arabs lived lived in Gaza at the point of uh, Jews. You mean? I mean Jews uh, lived in Gaza at the point of uh, disengagement. And uh, it wasn't financially feasible for Israel to de- defend them anymore because the economy was getting so bad. That's, that's one of the reasons. Now, another reason for the uh, giving away is uh, Sharon was very, just uh, a year, year and a half before uh, the Gaza disengagement made the statement that Israel will never give up Gaza. Arab, uh, Saran was the one that led the settlements, Jewish settlements in the West Bank and Gaza. Yet, all of a sudden, about a year ago, he flipped. He <laughs> says, we're going to give up Gaza. Disengage from Gaza. Why? Well, one of the theories out is that Sharon was up for indictment on three different charges that, that involved actually... Uh, Illegally acquiring, or his family, he and his family, illegally acquiring over several million dollars. Now, at that time, a little over a year ago, his chief advisors told him that one way to get away, get, avoid indictment, here he's prime minister, he might be indicted, is to give away Gaza. Why? Because the Israeli judicial system is under the left wing. All of the justice are, uh, uh, judges are left-winged in their political viewpoint. They want the Arabs to have uh, the West oh, Bank okay. and Gaza. Okay, all right. So if he can appease the, uh, these left-wing uh, judges, then they might not indict him. Okay, that was a theory for about a year. Then about three months before the engagement took place, Two Israeli investigative reporters published a book. The last two chapters of that book documented how that Tehran was under indictment, the facts concerning these indictments being valid, but yet he avoided the indictment uh, because of uh, the Gaza disengagement plan. Then the fourth reason for the this engagement is <clears throat> there are just 10,000 Jews living in Gaza settlers. If there were 50,000 in this, uh, the uh, disengagement of Gaza would have been impossible. So, from that standpoint, the Jewish people haven't had sufficient faith to occupy these lands. All right, now, just one other, one other point on this disengagement here. And, folks, again, if you have a thought, give us a call at 442-6102. That's 860-442-6102. Just from a statistical standpoint, when we think about this disengagement in Gaza, we, what we heard about uh, and what we saw on television were, were, were people uh, leaving their settlements. And, you know, they were being forced to leave, and it was, a, you know, in some ways a, a heart-wrenching experience. But... There was an awful lot more than that that was left behind, if you will. Uh, Just by way of statistics, Israel's second largest dairy farm was abandoned because it was in Gaza. Fifty percent of herbs that are exported from Israel come from Gaza. Those industries were gone. $120 million uh, worth of flowers are exported annually from Gaza. That is no longer part of Israel. Uh, Those 10,000 people that left now need new employment. 60% of Israel's cherry tomato exports come from Gaza, no longer. And 1,000 acres of greenhouses were abandoned, and 70% of its organic produce was lost. So this disengagement wasn't just people having to uproot and change where they lived, but a a big chunk of Israel's um, commerce 